Ever since the dawn of mankind, I feel like we have just been fascinated about technological innovations or things that just make the darkness bright. So upon discovering fire for the first time, I mean, mind-blowing technology, right? And I feel like the equivalent of that today is night vision. Now, I'm not talking about digital night vision. I'm talking about real image intensifiers in night vision housings like what you see in front of me making magic work, honestly, for lack of a better way to put it. And that is why I am super excited to be sharing with you today the first of a multi-part series on night vision on the channel. So welcome to 4 Ranch. Thanks for joining me today. And I'm going to kind of just dive right into it. So for those that are not aware of all the capabilities of modern day night vision, it is absolutely incredible, which is why I've been working very, very hard to try to showcase to the best of my ability how phenomenal and how light sensitive devices like these that you see in front of me are. So what are these devices? I have two different Armasite night vision optics in front of me. The first is going to be your standard PVS-14 monocular. The other is going to be a set of binos. This is the BNVD 40s, also from Armasite. Now, both of these are going to be rocking modern Generation 3 image intensifiers. But what makes these tubes that much more exciting is that this is the pinnacle series of Gen 3 white phosphor tubes made exclusively for Armasite by Elbit Systems of America. I'm going to do the best I can to show you how phenomenal these look to the eye. So disclaimer up front, guys, there is a really no way to show you the magic of night vision digitally through a camera and then you watching it through compression on YouTube. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do, but what I did is came up with a pretty crazy camera rig for the PVS-14 and I do have a recorder attached to give you kind of a POV view through the binos. Now the other quick disclaimer is that both of these devices were sent by Armasite so that I can dive into night vision and share, you know, some content with you guys. So again, this is the first of many videos to come on the channel. To start us out, I want to show how light sensitive these guys are, and I did that by testing different sources of light pollution. So if you're not aware of what that means, it's a general term for, you know, little things in your environment that give off light that may be seen by people using optics of this nature, or just giving off light to be seen by people in general. Now you may not think about it a whole lot, like you just holding your cell phone in front of your face, but in an environment where night vision is being implemented, you really stand out more than you think. Night vision is just awesome, guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see why that is. Now, the first thing I was really curious about was how much light is my cell phone going to give off? So this is a completely moonless night and my cell phone is starting at the lowest brightness setting possible. The background I'm using is roughly 50% black and 50% white. So no color, just a black and white image to give us some kind of controls. And the flickering you're seeing on the tree branches behind me is a pilot flame from a natural gas rig about three quarter miles away. And then you will also notice that my Apple Watch is shining on my wrist. Now I cranked it to full brightness on the cell phone and it essentially looks like I'm shining a flashlight on myself or even directly at the PVS-14 when it's in direct line of sight. So it puts off quite a bit of light. Now here was a match strike. Now it was a very, very small flame, but fire does put off quite a bit of IR light. Again, why you see the tree branches glowing in the background from that distant flame. And this is a cigarette. Now, my drill sergeant back in my military days used to always say that the enemy would see a cigarette at up to a mile away. So I was kind of curious and that's what inspired me to do this. But nonetheless, it actually gives a pretty good illumination point and possibly a point of aim if you are in a tactical environment and decided to smoke one. Now, no worries guys, I didn't inhale, so it doesn't count, right? And again, on the note of fire, here is again that pilot flame, approximately three quarter miles away, but I just wanted to show that in the background, it is completely illuminating both that tree line in the furthest part of this video, as well as it's illuminating the sky and clouds above. This was a very dark night that looks very bright thanks to that flame. And if I turn the gain down, you kind of see those trees I'm talking about, how they're glowing a little bit better just for reference. So again, fire puts off quite a bit of IR light that you may not necessarily realize on the visible spectrum. Now, before moving off to the muzzle flash portion of this video, by request actually, I went ahead and tested a standard TV remote, which believe it or not, puts off quite an IR strobe. So for those of you guys who want to get a PEC-15 or some kind of IR device, but just can't swing it, tell you what, TV remote makes quite a good IR strobe device if you want to duct tape it to your handguard. But in all serious guys, 
this thing does put off quite a bit more IR light than I realized. I was honestly very surprised by the amount of IR output coming out of the remote that I had been using day to day without ever knowing. And of course I got to try the different calibers, the 22 long rifle being one that I was initially curious in the beginning. And interestingly enough, it puts off a decent amount of a little bit of sparks. Now this is through just a standard five inch barreled handgun. I then switched to 12 gauge, unfortunately forgot to recorder initially, so decided to go ahead and put some more rounds through. And 12 gauge kind of was hit and miss as far as how much brightness it threw off, but nonetheless, a decent light. Nine millimeter was up next, and it's about as you'd expect, a decent flash, but nothing too overpowering. And I'm all about overkill on the channel, so I did bring out the Desert Eagle and fired off some 50 AE, which essentially lights up your entire environment as seen through night vision. Up next is my SBR, it's a 10 and a half inch barrel 556, and I was definitely expecting a decent amount of fireball, and it's about the same as the Desert Eagle. But here's where things get kind of interesting. I did want to go ahead and try it suppressed. So here is me, same rifle, putting a can on and quite a bit of signature reduction. Now the last thing I wanted to test is how much the suppressor would actually glow as I went ahead and essentially did some mag dumps because I had always heard that your suppressor will start glowing through the IR spectrum before it will start glowing on the visible spectrum. So I wanted to test the theory. Now as I worked my way into the second magazine, you definitely start seeing that noticeable glow. And for what it's worth, the can being used is a Griffin Armament M4 SDK. And by the end of that second mag, the forbidden popsicle does emerge in the night sky. Now I do want to mention that although this looks like it is glowing quite bright, I did not see any glow to the naked eye. So this is only being seen on the IR spectrum through the night vision devices, which again, I found to be pretty interesting. And you see it does cool down, at least with two magazines, relatively quickly. Any other things that you think would be interesting to test, the way you saw in this video, please leave a comment below. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. There's gonna be a lot more videos like this to come. I'm really, really having fun with this guy. So again, let me know what else do you wanna see. I'd be happy to put it together. Now, the next part in this series is gonna be essentially the same test, but we're gonna push the distances out. So this test was all done at approximately 25 yards. So I wanna see what's gonna happen closer to 500, maybe even 1,000 yards. And of course, I do gotta test my drill sergeant's theory that you could see a cigarette through night vision at over a mile away. Only one way to find out, right? So with that said, guys, I can't thank you enough for stopping by the channel. And as always, have a good one.